Next is our superintendent's report. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair and uh, members of the board. Uh, we have been very busy throughout the summer. Uh, we've been making sure that we're fully staffed, and I think we're, uh, we're there, including uh, with our new hires. We have, uh, among our new hires, we have 45 first-year teachers or uh, <coughs> teachers who are in their first year of public schools in South Carolina. Uh, we've been very busy making sure our teachers and staff have received uh, the professional development uh, training that they need for another banner year here in uh, District 5. And we've been making sure that our facilities are ready to receive teachers tomorrow and that uh, they'll be ready for our uh, <coughs> students next week. And you'll hear more about that from our uh, construction manager about any remaining hurdles that uh, have yet to, to be cleared uh, momentarily. Uh, also, since we last met, we're very proud of the Center for Advanced Technical Studies. Uh, the center was awarded, and, and under its uh, leadership by Dr. Bob Couch, our director there, was awarded the coveted National High Schools That Work Platinum High Achievement Award. Award. The center was praised by Dr. Jean Bottoms, who is the senior vice president of the Southern Regional uh, Education Board, SREB, and who is the founder of the High School That Works uh, program, who said, quote, that the center has shown how to raise student achievement with programs that blend college-ready academics and career technical studies, end of quote. So congratulations, Dr. Couch, and to all of our folks at the center and all of our high schools uh, who support the center. Our students performed very well on the PASS test and HSAT test at the conclusion of the school year. And uh, I love this quote from the state newspaper, uh, which uh, covered the article uh, statewide on testing results. And uh, in this state paper, it said, quote, Lexington Richland School District 5 stood out in the Midlands, the only district to rank in the top 10 school districts statewide for overall performance across all subject areas, end of quote. So we are certainly uh, uh, give kudos out to our students, teachers, and parents for the district's uh, really great performance, solid performance, once again, in English, language, arts, math, science, social studies, and writing. We're very proud of all of our folks, and we'll continue to work hard to sustain that and even improve it in this uh, year ahead. As uh, Mr. Bounds mentioned, we're very proud of Kaylee Graham, a senior at Chapin High School, who was named Miss Teen USA earlier this month. What a huge honor for her, and um, something we feel very good about is she gave a lot of credit uh, to sure. her experiences here in the district, which I think is a, a real tribute. We want to remind everybody that teachers, Peter, teachers return to work tomorrow. And our students will return in a week from now. So we're excited about that. One of my least favorite times of the year is the period of time when, uh, when teachers are here and there are no kids. I love teachers, but uh, I like teachers best when they're surrounded by kids because <laughs> when they're not surrounded by kids, they're asking me questions. <laughs> I like it when uh, their, their students are asking them questions. Um, uh, please be reminded that our annual kickoff rally honoring all members of our outstanding faculty and staff will be held Wednesday the 13th in the Coach Tim Whipple Arena at Irmo High, in the Irmo High School Gymnasium uh, beginning at 8.30. And uh, we can certainly be very confident that uh, the new school year promises to be great. We remain in good hands while we lost uh, some people to uh, retirement. Uh, we certainly have uh, backfilled um, very, very well. And uh, some of our key administrators who changed roles, who are new uh, to our staff, are with us this evening. So I want to introduce uh, uh, to the board uh, the following uh, uh, major administrative shifts since we last did the introductions a couple of months ago. Uh, <coughs> Tina McCaskill is our new principal at Irmo Elementary. Please welcome <laughs> Tina.
Thank you. Is it on now? Well, all right. Yeah. Gee, thanks. Uh, our new principal at Chapin Elementary is Lauren Prochak. Please join me in welcoming. And Lauren, aren't you a graduate of District 5 schools? Irmo High. Irmo High. Yeah, well, we love it when our own folks uh, stay with us. Congratulations. And uh, the legendary and highly esteemed Harriet Wilson is our new principal <laughs> at Seven Oaks Elementary School. Thanks for Also, please welcome our new Director of Special Services, Dr. Angie Slatton. And our Coordinator of Special Services, uh, Jenny Friend. Joining us most recently as our Coordinator of Purchasing is uh, Mr. Bruce Healy. Please welcome Bruce. And uh, assuming a new role with the district uh, after having been a, uh, a, a, an assistant principal is Jenny Garris, who is now our coordinator of instructional technology. Congratulations. <laughs> so as you can see, we're, we're very fortunate to have such a wonderful group of folks working here in the system, and we continue to be in very good hands. Uh, that concludes my remarks, and at this time we'll go to uh, our report from the Office of Design and Construction, uh, Mr. McAllister, our uh, 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 Director of New Design and Construction, and Chris Whitley, uh, our representative with Cumming Southern Management. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Hefner, members of the board. It's a pleasure to be with you again tonight to update you on the progress for our schools this summer. As you know, our primary emphasis this summer, uh, work-wise, we're at the three older high schools, Dutch Fork, Irmo, and Chapin. Um, I just, as a matter of fact, ran over here from Irmo High School uh, to make the board meeting. But we'll start with Chapin. Uh, we had OSF through Chapin on Friday, um, had a good inspection. Um, don't anticipate they're going to come back. We have just a few odds and ends that need to be completed before school starts that we're currently working on. Um, we, um, the gym floor is one area where we're still working. We, we have the floor down. It's now being sanded and finished. Um, this thing never works for me. There we go. Um, the gym floor is now being sanded, finished. Um, so we're anticipating an August 17th completion date on, on the gym floor. Um, but, but things are going well there. We're also working up the hill in what used to be the gymnasium, that converting that to a cafeteria and kitchen area. Um, work's going well there. We took the inspector through there and looked at some overhead items while we were there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, okay. Yeah, you can go on to the next. There you go. But anyway, uh, things are going well up the hill also. Um, we look for a September 9th completion up there. We, ha we don't have the OSF inspection scheduled yet, but that's, that's when our schedule shows us completing that area. And then once that is complete, we'll roll over and um, begin working on the existing cafeteria and kitchen and converting that to some classrooms. Questions at Chapin? Okay, we'll move on to Dutch Fork High School. Uh, Dutch Fork also had OS, OSF through there on Friday. Another good inspection. Don't anticipate them coming back there. Short list of items to be completed. Um, we're continuing to work on the landscaping around that project. Um, the, the soccer field, practice field that was sprigged, the sprigging didn't appear to take, so we're working with the contractor now to reschedule um, a grading of that and re-sprigging um, that field so that we get a good stand of grass. Questions at Dutch Fork? Yeah, that's, that's the renovation prior to the VCT and carpet going down. Yes, ma'am. My question is about Dutch Fork is the health science 
area and I know that there was a um, miscommunication or perhaps misunderstanding that this whole facility was a field house which no, I know no it's not but um, I don't know if either one of you or, or perhaps someone over um, Chris, Chris, Dr. Milton could just talk about the educational purpose for the health science building. I'll let Christina for the most part handle that, but what I do know is that we, we, uh, we have a lecture theater in there, I think, and it was set up with health science in mind. I believe you have uh, some health science classes that will be taught over there, I think. Well, we're fortunate that Dr. Owens has brought, and he, he and his team, I think, yeah, he and his, Dr. Owens and his team have really broadened their perspective of what health science can be in School District 5 and at Dutch Fork High School. So just this year, if you were to look at our course catalog, you're going to see new classes added at Dutch Fork High School to make sure that we're building a strong health science program. So yes, ma'am, we do, we've certainly broadened the classes, increased the number of offerings that our students will be available to, and Dr. Owens and his entire staff have looked to make sure this is a top-notch program to recruit students into the STEM professions so that they can have as many true life experiences to prepare them for the workforce. Another important thing to note there is the new square footage that was part of the health science building, we were able to replace and renovate, which is what we've been working on this summer, and create a lot more classrooms in spaces that are now being pulled out into that building. So they're not necessarily all of its new construction, but they're getting a lot of new classrooms as a result of that building. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Melton. Okay, Armo High School. Um, Irmo, again, we were out there today with OSF, um, had a nice and long inspection, I guess is the way to put it. Um, They're going to be back on Wednesday afternoon to look at some items again. We're, we're putting some temporary walls at the connector building that will allow you to exit the Cape um, into part of the new uh, lobby area of the, cafeteria, of the auditorium. Excuse me. Um, so we anticipate it's, there's going to be a lot of long hours between now and Wednesday, but um, we anticipate being able to complete all of those items. My, my team is there now meeting with the contractor, meeting with the architect, lining out, getting these remaining items completed prior to the start of school. Um, the auditorium, we're continuing to work inside the auditorium, installing finishes, um, getting sheetrock finished, working on stage equipment. Um, all of those type of items as we, we continue to press forward and getting that area wrapped up. Questions at Irmo? Okay. Finally, the new middle school work's been going extremely well out there. Um, we're continuing to pour slabs, uh, work on foundation block, uh, MEP rough end, below ground. Uh, we're Focusing mainly on the uh, kitchen area, the, electric, the main electrical and mechanical rooms, trying to get the heart of that building constructed first so that as we get out into the classrooms, we'll be able to uh, bring systems up um, quick, quickly. Um, so work, work's progressing there. We're also site work-wise, we hope to pave uh, one of the primary uh, parking lots there uh, this month. Uh, we already have the curb and gutter installed, so we're going to work on paving it, and then we'll jump to the other side and get the other major parking lot completed. Questions at the new middle school? As we conclude, I just wanted to make, make a quick uh, comment here and, and thank some folks, uh, especially out of Lynn's department. Without Scott Carlin and David Sheely and Steve Kane, I don't know where we'd be exactly. Uh, cooperation we get from the executive staff. Contract construction at, at Dutch Fork High School are, are my heroes, the, the job they've done, and we don't have to stay behind them. Uh, and Chris and his group, Joe Huggins, Lyle Miller, uh, Chris Farr, Paul Muscotti, and Scott Waddell. And I would like to challenge this group to remember the last time that you opened school at one of your high schools not using any mobile classrooms because we don't have any out there now. We don't have any any portables on high school campuses. There are no portable high 
Well, hey. All right, that's great. We look forward to the day. We can say that uh, across the whole the whole system. And this time we'll go to our uh, monthly financial reports uh, from our chief financial officer, um, Lynn Richardson. Thank you, Dr. Heffer. Thought he forgot my name there for a second. <laughs> um, exhibit C in Not your problem. board packet is the monthly financial statement for the month of July. Um, July is not a month of a whole lot of action, obviously, so you're not going to see a whole lot in here, so there's not a whole lot to talk about, except for we are having some system issues that have some of our expenditures and revenues posting in the incorrect year that are reflecting in these statements. But if you'll notice, um, you know, any of our expenditure accounts that involve teachers, uh, teachers won't receive their first paycheck of the new fiscal year until uh, the end of August. So that's why you don't see a lot of expenditures posted as of now. I'll be glad to entertain any questions that you may have. Yes. Um, okay. Um, I, I guess like Ms. Watson, I'll bring up, I think it was a spate of questions last week on student fees. And I think it might be helpful. I know I'm putting you on the spot and you want me here a brief time, but the, the, the sort of a flurry of questions are number one, why we have student fees, and number two, um, you know, what, what they actually got to pay. I know those are questions you can't answer completely, but I think it's worth spending a minute to talk about. I know student fees, have, from my perspective, have probably been here longer than I've been here, and and there were some considerations with trying to balance. You know, homeowners complaining about having to fund everything, and and some of the the programs being, you know, have some fee components, but I thought it might be just a good reminder, particularly since we're on a re recorded session, that people would have a place that they could go listen if they'd like to, to understand more about student fees. Mr. Richardson, would you like for me to respond to that? Sure. And then uh, you, you can backfill for me. In an ideal world, I wouldn't have any fees. Uh, but uh, that's just uh, uh, something that would be very, very costly here. I think someone asked us to look into it since I've been here, and I don't remember the number, but it's a very pricey number that it would take uh, to backfill for the fees that we uh, generate. Uh, one of the uh, basic uh, um, guidelines we give our schools is that, uh, of course, we want them to charge as few of fees as absolutely uh, possible and certainly uh, we, we uh, don't want them charging for what I would call the core courses uh, of English, math, language, uh, uh, science, uh, the, the, the standard uh, courses. But uh, there are fees uh, for certainly uh, advanced courses, things that go beyond the uh, uh, standard uh, curriculum for sure and that there are certainly uh, what I would call user fees or participation fees for uh, many of our extracurriculars, which we're very fortunate to have uh, um, uh, really many, many wonderful extracurriculars uh, here. And, uh, and again, the other uh, thing that we uh, request of our schools is that they be able to identify what the, the fees are uh, used for that they uh, do charge. I do know that we have at least one neighboring district, and there may be one, uh, that has um, eliminated uh, fees. And I don't remember the, uh, the stats, but they did so, uh, you know, by upping their, uh, their general operating budget uh, fairly significant uh, to offset, because, offset those things, because obviously there is, a, there is a, an additional cost for the kinds of programs that, uh, that we provide uh, to, to someone. And uh, so I, I, uh, I know that it's, uh, it's, a, it's a pricey amount of money. Uh, and again, in an ideal world, we wish that we could offer everything free. One of the things that I remember uh, from the time that I first moved to the state, I was here uh, just before we were building uh, the Riverbanks Zoo. And uh, one of the big debates that I recall from that was, would there be a fee to get into the zoo or not? Because it, 
is largely funded by taxpayers as well. And they did their research, and as I recall, uh, the decision was that there would be uh, a fee because they had found that uh, things that, uh, for which there was no charge were not very highly valued, and uh, they didn't hold up as well over time. And uh, so uh, they made the decision to, uh, to go the direction they've gone, which I think has proved to be uh, a very good, has proven to be a very good decision for them. Um, but that, in a, in a nutshell, is, uh, uh, I think, the situation with regard to, to fees. And I think at the end of the day, the question is, uh, do we think it's appropriate uh, for people who receive uh, services uh, that may go far and beyond above what the minimum requirements are for them to share in that cost for participation? Uh, or is it something that uh, should be borne by um, someone else? And I don't know if Mr. Richardson, if you'd like to uh, expand on that, I'd be happy for you to do so. Well, really, the only thing, I, pardon me, the only thing I'd like to add to to any of the academic fees, especially uh, any, you know, most of that's collected for consumables that are used in those classrooms. And you know, understanding that if a fee is collected for a specific purpose, it must be spent on that specific purpose. They're not allowed to use it for any other purposes other than what it was intended for. We have athletic fees. We've had, you know, we've had sports added over the years. We've had transportation costs skyrocketing. You know, we got coaching supplements. So we have looked at our athletic fees in this district and have raised those. Um, and parking fees are another one that we've raised at the high schools. And, you know, with all the new um, wellness policies and, and, and focus on healthy eating, canteen sales at schools, of basically high schools especially, I was a a cash cow really for, for high schools, that money's basically gone away. So in an effort to try to help them, the, uh, you know, we have um, increased the uh, parking fees by $10. And that is going straight to the school to, so to help offset some of these um, canteen sales that are losing. The other $40 is put in a fund specific for student parking. And in those cases where they need repainting, repaving, that kind of things, we have funds available to do that. Uh, that concludes my report. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. And I, Mr. White, I appreciate you bringing that question up because I do know that a couple of us have been asked that about the school fees. It's always nice to talk about at the beginning of the school year. Next item is public participation. We did not have anyone sign up for public participation. So we will move straight to the action agenda.